What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire, the man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We're going to be talking through tonight, Tuesday's NBA slate. And guys, I got to tell you, it's been a little bit of a, str a struggle city for me here lately. So hoping to turn it around tonight. I can't seem to quite get the right mix, even when I make a move and 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 and, and commit to the, the fact that last night, I, I believe that Sabonis was going to be out and I played Rashawn Holmes. Felt like I should have had a good night, but it didn't work out for me. And um, just ended up missing the cash in my big ones. And, and that's, you know, that's that's going to set you back. And it's been a little bit like that, the story of my of my January 23 so far. I don't, I love my new house, so I really don't want to have to blame it on the house. So I'm, but I might have to, I might have to take a break and work somewhere else. Anyway. Yeah, like, it's yeah. like the Amityville Horror or something like that. Seriously, it's like, it's, like it's just, it's cursing all my lineups. Everything else is good, but it's the lineups. Um, anyway, uh, Sheets, I looked through this slate. I thought it was interesting because I think there's a lot of decisions, especially as far as spend up scope for a slate that's this small. We don't usually get that and of uh, questionable value and some questionable tags. So some of it fun, some of it not so fun. Did you have any, how'd you do last night and have any overall thoughts on this? The Nas Reed news really, really, really ruined me because I, I was all ready to just full fade Luca and play middling builds. Really? Right. I was going to have, I was going to have 30%, 30% of them were going to have Lamelo, And then the other 70% was going to have complete like, stuff like garland sangoon like all that stuff you right. know what i mean right and then when when reed i like, totally opened up i just had to play luca you know what i mean there's just no way around it right so, so, so i played luca in like 70 percent and 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 lamello in 30 percent so that you know what happens to 100 percent of lineups <laughs> there you go. No. That's hey that's exactly what happens you're right you, yeah. you can't do anything that we were just talking about before i don't think they've ever combined for such a low score like between the two of them on a slate it's it's you, you can't you can't expect that um it is something that to keep an eye out though for what what's happening with luca and as the season goes on and some teams start playing more competitive games that if you if you really i mean he's he probably had like eight hockey assists last night that, you know if not more because if you're going to trap him like literally when he crosses half court it's just going to be his pass to somebody else and their pass to somebody else for an open look. It was, they were playing four on three all night. So it wasn't like he was like being ineffective as a real basketball player. It's just the way that his numbers led it to. And it's just something to keep an eye out for, for these teams that are so heliocentric, like, like Dallas is being the, the biggest of any team in the, in the league. Anyway, um, I'm excited about this one. I don't know why I'm excited because it's a four gamer, but honestly, I, maybe I need a nice little four gamer just to get back on the profitable side of thing before another monster slate, because it's uh I've done I've done much better this this last season and a half or so on, on these little slates. So I'm I'm ready for this one. And I think it's I think it's some interesting decisions you can make. And some guys in early on projecting to get a lot of ownership that I, I sort of I, I sort of don't trust. Um so that's 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 sort listen, of we're, just, listen, we're we're starting off the content with with Bobby just 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 firing off heliocentric like it's like nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so we're we're we are already like we're 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 already zoned in. This is gonna be the heliocentric slate and we'll, uh, we'll <laughs> kind of get it, get it going um no but seriously but so so we're gonna have and, and and we have a big piece of news which is we never get this okay so mostly i look at i, I do look at other things i look at nba.com but one thing that saber sim doesn't do very often they will they'll, they'll generally project guys in longer a little bit later than ever, other people will and when Gobert is expected to starting lineup on nba.com and roto grinders but he's not on on saber sim I actually agree with Saber Sim in this particular case. It's just kind of interesting because I don't usually get to see that early in the day. So early yeah, in the day the on Saber awesome, Sim, everything awesome is going to awesome, look. The Osmo awesome guys don't think he's playing either. I think um, that they're right because I've watched him try to move and he has he cannot move with that groin. But we're, we're you know it's just funny because he's not officially anything yet, you know. Um, but I'm guessing he probably does sit. So and that's obviously going to be a huge point of the slate. People yeah. can say, "Oh, Nas Reed, we expect more," and it's true you do. But at the same time, Nas Reed was was in foul trouble the whole game. Garza played well off the bench, as did Terrain Prince. So Nasri just didn't have quite as big a game as we're used to seeing him have. Even still, yeah, you'd still probably take him at this price. <laughs> like, I'll tell you everything you need to know. I think I think Nasri had nine played nineteen minutes in the first half, and then just and then the second half. I, I did he play that? Game? Or was the, the second, second half, half? I know he missed a bunch because he had five fouls, and yeah. he had, I thought he had three fouls before halftime, but I could be wrong. Could be. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so I personally am like, uh, you know, that, that's going to be the decision making point on this slate, you know, obviously overall and how many Minnesota guys do we play? What do you trust? And we'll talk about that on our second game, because let's see, what did he end up with yesterday? No, he played, he played, despite his foul trouble, he played 19 minutes in the first half. Nasri. 
I guess he fell. He got in the foul trouble. For, I guess to start the second. Yeah, second. yeah. I mean, he, if you've ever watched Nas Reed play, it's like you'll see. You'll see. Oh, and Nas Reed picks up his first foul. Next thing you know, he's got his fourth foul, and it's been four minutes. Um, but yeah, that's it, it's just a just something to keep an eye out for. Also, they had to have the game tonight. So, and I and Minnesota's really trying to win games. Anyway, we'll we'll get into that game when it comes up. I just wanted to mention it because obviously that's going to dictate a lot of the slate. As far as Golden State, uh, Boston goes, like this is, I mean, these are the kind of games you look for motivation, particularly from a side like like Golden from uh, from Boston. Boston did beat them in Golden State earlier this year, but obviously this was a finals rematch. I think that kind of stuff matters to Boston. I think Boston, as much as they have some experience and stuff on their team, they're driven by young players who care about, you know, they grew up in this era caring about narratives and how things seem and revenge games and all that stuff. That's a real thing to a lot to a lot of these guys. So. I'm going to treat the game as such. And uh, immediately I like Wiggins right off the bat. The price is too low. And I think this is the game they let him get back going. Um, and I think that if you're not playing Wiggins, I think Curry and Draymond are both extremely reasonable here, but it's just how you weigh them against other value. Um, Curry can go off against anybody. I think that, that he's going to end up as a lower owned stud. So I have no problem if that's the route you want to go. But right now, I'm finding Wiggins as the the most logical guy to get in. in let's, my let, 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 let's let I want to talk about this Wiggins business for a minute, okay? Because yeah. when I when I first pulled up my you know my sheets after I just I just ran them and I'm like, okay, Wiggins looks to be a top five point per dollar play. And then I'm like, let's go back to like I think it was last year, the year before, where we basically just faded Wiggins every day, you know that 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 that, and you got me into it. You know what I mean? Just just why are we playing Wiggins? Why are we playing Wiggins? He just never got there. Never did. Never did anything. And now I'm looking at him with a, with a projection, and then I'm looking at his his game log, and and literally no no results, like you would say, like no result on this board makes you happy. It's not as if Curry's out or anything like that, and he's playing against Boston. What? Tell, explain to me why we're playing. Well, well, they they babied him coming back first of all, not only with t- with minutes played, but with usage. Like he could easily play 38 minutes tonight, not you know 30. So there's one there's one part of it. Um, first of all, the next part is that he was the second best, he's the second best producer for the Warriors against the Celtics specifically going back to last season. And I feel like they're, they're going to try to win this game. The Golden State needs to win games. Like, um, I'm not going to look at a five game sample size for a guy who, because he's coming back from an injury. And then, and then when he hits the real, like in all those games are not like games where you're going, okay, well, we're counting on Wiggins to take over for us. Um, not to say that you're expecting him to take over, but 5,800 just feels a little too cheap for a competitive game where he's going to play over 30 minutes. But I understand, like, if you want to fade him and use that as a reason, I think that's actually fair. Like, he is a guy, but we have to remember, players adjust. And if you look at him at the start of this season and you saw the 5,800 price at his games before when he was averaging, you know, 38 fantasy points a game, 5,800 is just way too cheap for that. And that's what I think we're actually betting on, not the guy who you've looked at the last five games. That's That makes sense? What do you think of Curry? I like him. Um, and to like to, to go even further, like if you're going to, unfortunately, we don't get the, the the great multi-builds, 222s, you know, where I could play six entries for 100K for first. We don't get those things on on the the, month, the, the, the Tuesdays and Thursdays. But this would be a fun multi-entry slate to me because I love the idea of Tatum running Tatum back with Curry. Um, but there's also a lot of other really good spend-ups. And I do think Tatum takes these games personally. Um, whether it means that the production gets there, I can't promise that, but I do really like him. And I think you're playing one of he or Jalen Brown here. If this game was in was in uh, uh, excuse me in, in San Francisco, I would say play Jalen Brown. The guy's got an incredible history of, of overproducing when he goes back to his hometown. Well, the place where he, you know went to school and everything. And I and I do buy into that kind of stuff. But right now I have it Tatum then uh, Tatum then then Brown. And I'm just probably not going to end up even though they're all fine individually because the game is so high. Smart, Marcus Williams, Al Horford, Derek White are all guys where if I ended up with, I wouldn't feel terrible about it. But I, I'm not going out of my way to try to get them. I'll tell you who I like all right, in this game. So first of all, I wanted to ask you about Draymond because you would think that um, if this would be a game that he would really want to show out in as well. Um, but he's not like a show out. He wants this team to win more than anything else in the world. Right, right. You know what I mean? Um, but... Um, I'll tell you who I like on a stupid four game slate. It's a guy you're probably not supposed to play in this matchup or whatever it is. I, I just, I just kind of think you're just supposed to play Jordan Poole every game. Um, whether Curry's in, whether he's out, where whatever's going on, 
and just hope that it's one of those games where he scores 60. Um, he just he just can get so freaking hot. And, and when he gets hot, even Curry just, like, lets him shoot, you know? Um, Curry will let anybody shoot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of – I, I kind of – I kind of would prefer. I mean, for me, I prefer Pool over over um, over Wiggins um, on a four game GPP slate. That's just. I'll tell you what you're gonna. I, I, what I like about it is that there's a there's a no on the play. Like people. That's what I'm saying. Care if it shows five percent, I don't think you're gonna get like two percent on it. <laughs> yeah, and and he could very like like, like you would say he could very easily end up with sixteen fantasy points. Hundred I mean, like, percent. Yeah. Very very clearly. I like your your point though. But, but and, dude, and, I mean, we you know listen, I. I I, I try. I tried the like the lockish play with Miles Turner, and he only had twenty. <laughs> what the hell? What's the point? I may as well, as well, may as well, may as well go with the five percent guy. It was, listen, if you're gonna if you're gonna lose anyway, may as well have a five percent guy. That's the best way I could describe it. No, um, I agree. And if you want to extend it, by the way, I don't think Clay is all that different. I mean, in terms of number of shots, so I, I think that you could ex- ex- extend him to that. Now, now, Poole probably without scoring fifty real life points probably has a higher. I guess he has a higher ceiling, although Clay just scored 74, but he did have 54 points. Um, but I think I think those guys are the kind of guys who can help separate you if you're trying to look to get different on these slates. So I have no problem with that sheets whatsoever. But I personally, at first look, I'm going to prioritize a guy like Wiggins at 5,800. But it doesn't mean by the end of the day he's going to be in all my lineups or anything. Just right and, now. I, and, I, and, I, and I do like Tatum as, as my favorite boss. I like it. Tatum gets up for these things, and, and, and he can go up there and put up 70 with the best of them. So I'm, I'm good with that. All right. Um, this is a game I really like, and I think that will probably dominate a lot of the exposure. Uh, the Toronto Minnesota game on the Toronto side first. It's a little bit, a little bit more straightforward because it's basically the same thing it always is. I, I, I just, it's, it's really hard to know which guys to play until you just look at the guys with the highest ceiling, and it's been Fred Van Vliet. And when they're in trouble, he's, he's been the guy for them. So uh, I have Van Vliet number one. I have Scotty Barnes, number two. I have OG, number three, and Siakam, number four. Siakam hasn't scored 50 in the last 10 games, I don't think. Um, let me double check that. It might, might be off by a point or two in some of them. Whereas we have Fred Van Vliet, who's back-to-back 60, you know what I mean? And he's taking a ton of shots, and he he's actually making shots, which is something he didn't do for most of the season. Uh, he also has had the, his usage is higher than ever. The assist rate is, is great. The rebound rate is great. Uh, I really like Van Vliet here, so he's probably my favorite, but I do think that that you could definitely talk me into Scotty Barnes, uh, Ananobi, and to some extent Siakam. I just find it hard with Siakam because, oddly, I actually kind of prefer Curry today, and I haven't said that about Curry versus Siakam in a long time. Um, but that, that's sort of how I have this one ranked, and, it, and it's going to matter because on the other side, assuming that Gobert is out again, you probably want two or three pieces minimum, uh, the guys, I mean, Nas Reed will be my automatic one. I don't care about the exact thing. And there's other guys who could, yeah, whatever. I'll, Nas Reed is my number one. Um, Torian Prince got more minutes last night, partly because the Nas Reed foul trouble, partly because they don't have Gobert and he's going to get more minutes. And 3,600 is completely fair. If you're not going to play Nas Reed, to me, the only way I can see to do it making sense is playing Luca Garza and hope, hoping for more Nas Reed foul trouble and that they keep Garza on the court. Really good fantasy point per minute producer. Um, so, so that would be that would be a thing, and then you get into the and I actually have like Kyle Anderson and Anthony Edwards split up. It's like whichever night, depending on the night, one of those guys runs the offense basically. And last night it was Kyle Anderson. Maybe tonight it's Anthony Edwards. So I certainly want pieces. The only one I know for sure that I'm playing from this game right now is Nas Reed. If there's no Gobert, but I probably end up with one of Anderson and Edwards with Reed and possibly Prince as well to run back with Van Vliet or one of the other guys I mentioned. What do you, what do you have here for this one, Sheets? Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, I mean, it depends on who's playing, um, right. but, uh, but it doesn't depend on who's playing with, from the Toronto side. Cause you know, they're, they're playing eight guys, 40 minutes and you know, it's uh right. You want to play, you want to play him. I, I, you know, I think, I think probably Trent is a guy I wouldn't mind not having. Um, uh, and I, Van Vliet just, you know, he just, when he gets it rolling, he's just, you know, he's just, uh, he's tough. Um, and like you said, I mean, Siakam at center, uh, only center only eligible is a little annoying. It's a little cheaper than he has been. He's been over 10 K. Yep. Um, and Minnesota is definitely a good, a good spot. Um, so play a whole bunch of this game. Uh, Van Vliet, Ananubi, Barnes and Siakam be mine. Uh, Precious made a couple of threes yesterday, I think, but I, I don't even think you need to do that. Um, uh on 
on on Minnesota, I don't want to play Luke Garza uh, if he, if if he ends up getting ownership. Uh, I, I, there are some sites that have him listed at thirty percent ownership right now. Um, <laughs> Presume uh, that well. That's presuming that you know that that Gobert is out. You know, that's, yeah, that's going to happen. They're going to say, okay, he's going to get, and, and they're seeing. I don't know. People are seeing he scored sixteen real life points yesterday. Is that what happened? You know, in, in his, he, in his, I mean, he. I'll, well, I'll give him one thing. If he plays twelve minutes, he's getting eighteen fantasy points. If he plays sixteen, he's getting twenty. Like he just he 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 just scores. He gets fantasy points all the time. Yeah. Um. But I, you know, if he ends up popular, I'd ra- I'd rather not do that. Uh. I also I'd rather not play Trey Prince, but but um. Uh, we'll just have to see who's playing. Um, Can I mention it? Kind of, I think, I think, I think, I think the easy thing to do is play is play uh, Anthony Edwards, um, and then play him with 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 uh, uh, on the other side of of Van Vliet. I think those those two can get it going, uh, to say the least. Um, and yeah, if 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 Gobert is out, I'm playing Nasri. I mean, again, it's that's a, it's as simple as that. I, play, I played him on a hundred game slate, hundred percent of my lineups. I'm certainly going to play him on a four game slate. 100% of my lineup. So yeah. um, if that's the case, then I could just only hope that people, I don't know, he's going to be 100% owned anyway. Uh, but I, I just have to, I have to take that square. I just have to do it. I agree. He's the one guy, the first thing you put, you plug in, in, is my, in my opinion. But I think this is a really good, you know, sort of like a different version. But I think the first two games we talk about are both very stackable um, with nice totals. Um, and I, and, and just a lot of, you know, a, a lot of things except for extreme value that I love because Prince and, and Precious, are, I think are both okay to take shots on. I just, I personally would rather stick with, you know, I'd rather see if I can find something else that I like a little bit better, but I don't mind if you get stuck on Torian and Prince. All right. Well, next up, we have Brooklyn, uh, Phoenix. You want to start this one off? Yeah. So God knows who's playing. Um, I think everybody's going to play for, for Brooklyn. Yeah, on the Phoenix side though, you have Paul is questionable. Um, all I'll say about this is this is gonna be the fourth time in a row, actually not exactly the top, fourth time in a row that that Kyrie Irving's gonna be projected to be like a top play, and he's literally never gotten there. Yeah. Um and and now he's playing a Phoenix. Now again, it's not exactly the same Phoenix team right now. Um, so I don't know how defensively good they are with this this group, but uh Nonetheless, uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if you were participating in this, but you noticed the, the other day, like Steph Curry was, you know, he was, he was really, really high owned. Dude, if you looked at Twitter, like after like the first half, it was as if it was like a fixed game. It, it was if I can't believe that Seth Curry has zero point. Seth Curry, this, how anybody's playing Seth Curry? Why did I play Seth Curry? You're an idiot. This is this, 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 this. Only nepotism that he's even in the league, whatever it is. Like, dude, he's 3K. And he's starting a point guard. He's just gonna get there. You know what I mean? Like it just happens. You know this, and, and you're like, you, I know this is like a pet peeve of yours. This, people that whine at halftime, you know, especially with these cheapo value plays. You know what I mean? Like whatever. Yeah. Uh, so nonetheless, uh, he did end up. He did have just fine with 28 points. Yep. Um, and now, again, now, now he's that begs, that begs the question. Boy, oh boy, what if he did play well in the first half? How many would have gotten? Yeah, um, seriously. Anyway. So yeah, I mean, I I I just don't think I'm gonna do Kyrie. I don't I don't care what he projects at. I just don't think I'm gonna do it. He's got he's got to show me that he could put up a number, right? I, I that doesn't seem seem too unreasonable of a request. No. Um. Um. Uh, this would be a pretty cool time to troll like against an actually good defensive team. Um. But I I'm not doing it. As a matter of fact. I don't have anything popping up for Brooklyn right now. Um, what if I told you that Brooklyn's second best, probably their second best offensive player who's available because there's no Durant, is going back to, to play the team that, that let him go after having the, the greatest eight-game stretch anyone's ever had, basically? He's 5,200. I mean, it's not I, like- I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about just saying F it in gambling. Uh, I mean, they've yeah. been better while he's been on the court. The, the, the minutes I think are going to trend up anyways. They, they, they've been losing games. Why not make a mix up, you know, and, and you might get something weird here where like, like not, not necessarily that he would start, but it, first of all, he might. And second of all, he also might play 30 plus minutes rather than the 20, like, like he's been effective. He's one of the guys who can, can actually get shots for them. I can, I'll buy it, man. I'll buy a little bit of that, but going back to Phoenix. For everybody that doesn't know, we were talking about that TJ Warren. Yeah. TJ Warren back in Phoenix. 
doesn't feel great at the price as does nobody, by the way, for Brooklyn, for me, like everybody just feels like a little bit more than I want to play them. And if we're going to play Royce O'Neal at 5,700, okay. I just don't feel like that's what I want to do. Um, it, it's okay, but it's, it's not my favorite. And, and also like it, it's, it doesn't help that there's not a whole lot on the other side of this game that makes me want to stack it, especially if Chris Paul plays If Chris Paul doesn't, it's a whole different thing, but sort of guessing that he will play tonight as of right now, but it's hard to know. And if he doesn't play, I think that all that would do is make me play Saban Lee a little bit um, as a they value. Let him, they let him in that game. Huh? They let him play. He, played, he played 28 minutes in the last game. Um, it was a blowout yeah. and he's been playing more in the closer games, but I, I, I mean, they're, they're struggling at their, with their guards. So I would be open to playing Saban Lee uh, also <laughs> worth noting that there's no Dwayne Washington. So I have a, I have a, I have a really just seems like a question I'm supposed to know the answer to. They signed Saban Lee to a 10 day, 10 day contract. Mm-hmm. Does that mean a 10 game contract or a 10 day contract? 10 day. So this could be the end of his 10 day contract. Mm-hmm. Um, this game. So I think they play him. Like if, if Paul is out. Oh, I think, so. I don't think they have a choice. I mean, yeah. they, they legitimately don't like their other point guard is Damian Lee, which is not, he's not really a, point guard at all like he's just right. the size of a point guard so I, th- I think they might have to play him right um that's only if chris paul's out of course but even even chris with chris paul playing he's he's actually still showing up as a reasonable value which is kind of crazy. yeah um but yeah that i would it's just not it's this is the game that i have probably well, i don't know if i have the least interest in but it's just so I so i i, I got something for you then okay, okay. How, how about how about uh deandre eight uh t- yeah um not 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 my favorite play without chris paul i'd like it better uh brooklyn as a team that we used to think of as being really really tough really uh you know we wanted to play all the big men they've been exactly the opposite and they've been i think the second best team in the league at allowing yeah. fantasy points to big men um they, they've just been they've, they've been better but I, I don't mind like that's fine with me i just don't personally it's not there's nothing drawing me to it yeah okay Right. Um, and then we have, we have a pretty decent last game here, uh, Philly, uh, Philly against Portland, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we have Embiid, who is the high, highest projected player on the slate. Um, pretty, I would say a pretty reasonable 11 K. Um, very reasonable. Uh, so I guess I have him as my overall top. Oh, you know what? Hold on one second. You got, you got to pause. Okay. One yeah. Pause. Yeah, you were talking about the uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. So Embiid's the best play, I think. I think if you can if you can get to him, I think you're supposed to play him. I mean, it's, it is a more I look at this the short slate. You know, you're supposed to find fantasy points, but you, you know what? There are fantasy points out there. Tatum's got pit fantasy points. Curry's got fantasy points. Edwards, Van Vliet. So it's not like you need this, but I do have him rated as the best. Um, and then what's his name? Uh, Lillard, very very deserving 10K at this point. Um, I don't know if I can do it, but um, certainly rates decently. I just prefer to spend it on, on Embiid. And then um, I'm not, here's a guy who didn't do it for me the, the other day, but he's really cheap still, is, is Josh Hart. So he's 4,900. Anthony Simons looks reasonable enough. Uh, I don't think I'm going to pay 7,300 for Nurkic in that matchup. Uh I don't know. Is is Josh Hart a bad play? No, I mean, like, if you're looking at a game logs, yeah, it doesn't feel good. And same thing kind of with Simons a little bit. Like, it's also what's really the huge difference between Simons and Maxi here. Like, I don't see a massive okay. difference between them. Um, I agree that Embiid is the most obvious, like, natural spend up. I think it's probably the one with the most safety and the least, you know, the, low, the least that he really kills you ever. Um, but... I also think you could make an argument for Harden, who's been awesome um, for the most part. And, and those guys have really, really done it outside of Harden's last horrible game. He, you know, he's been, in, what does he had? 50, what, eight times and six times in a row? Six right. times in a row, I believe it was. Um, good matchup. So I'm, I'm more on the Embiid side, but I don't mind Harden. Um, and uh, large field, I don't, I, I don't actually don't mind Maxi, and I don't mind 
Simons. Um, but I, I think, I think Josh Hart is cheap enough to where maybe you just do the thing that, that people did. Whoever was fortunate enough to do with Lou Dort last night and he had the best game he's had all season just because he's 4,800 and that's what happens. Um, these guys have been under 5k. They just start hitting everything. So I, I personally, the way, the way I'm prioritizing the, the last game at Embiid is the guy who I'm most exposed to. I'm not, I don't find anybody else that I, that I feel like I need to play. But a lot, all those other guys are, are okay for me. The priorities for me on the slate are getting to Nas Reed, one of uh, Anderson or Edwards. This is assuming that Go Bears out. Um, I even think I mentioned Prince, but uh, Jalen McDaniel's uh, Jaden McDaniel's. Jay He's another one that that, is, that we should consider. I, I do like Wiggins. I don't mind the Curry Tatum back and forth. Fred Van Vliet, uh, Embiid. Are, are, are sort of the guys I'm spending for, but it's hard to get your builds together, right? Without using a little bit of the value, the terrain prints and other people have precious. I'd like to find something different, but as of right now, I don't have anything way off the board that, that stands out as, as being a good value play. Um, that same in Lee thing, if, if Chris Paul is out is one that would turn into, I think probably the best projected player on the slate, except for Nas Reed. Yeah. My, my one, my one, uh, what did they, what does the guy say? The terrible take. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate the, the Jordan Poole play. That'll be my. I like. Hey, look, if it works, you're you get to get all the credit, and no one's gonna fault you because we all know what you're getting. We're getting into if you play it. So yep, keep, absolutely, certainly no, nothing not, wrong with it. I'm not. I'm not allowed. Not allowed to go through. But, oh, can you? Can you believe Jordan Poole can't make a shot? Right. Yeah, like, yeah. Right. No. No. Yeah, yep. <laughs> what's happening? Jordan Poole only has 10 and a half. That's what, by the way, that's what he gets there. It's always like when he has like 10 Ridiculous. and a half. Up like 15 Ridiculous. Ridiculous. NBA is rigged. It's, it's so not, it's, it's rigged. They let him make that three from out there. Um, all right, guys. Well, it should be fun. I'll be, well, Sheets, I think, will be with me too. It'll be live at 6 Eastern. And uh, yeah, let's make some money tonight. Sheets, anything else? Um, no, sounds good. All right. Good luck, everybody.